Today we're going to be talking about the differences and similarities between a tall piston and a short piston. The big piston in question is one out of a Mopar 361 big block and the short piston came out of a 5.3 LS. There's a technological difference of about 40 years between these two, but at the end of the day, a piston is still a piston and they're still gonna do the same thing that they did in 1962 as they did in 2001. Now, when we talk about the height of the piston, there's actually two different measurements that we're actually talking about. One is the compression height, and the other one is the piston height itself. The piston height is actually really easy. That just takes into consideration the very top of the piston to the very bottom of the piston below the skirt. Now the compression height's a little bit more complicated. That measures from the center line of the piston all the way to the top of the crown of the piston. And the total size of the piston really doesn't play a role in piston selection at all. But aside from that, we still need to know the differences, the benefits and the drawbacks of a tall piston versus a short piston. One of the most obvious things is that the taller the piston, the straighter it's gonna go up and down the bore. Because it's furthest most points of contact, are further away, it allows a piston to align itself better up against that bore going up and down the cylinder. If the piston is really short, it'll tend to tweak a little bit more compared to the taller piston, and it's possible to lead into a little bit more cylinder wear. But because you need so much more material to make a piston taller, inevitably the piston also becomes heavier. A heavier piston puts more load up against the crankshaft, puts more load against the cylinder walls, and it becomes a great contributor to parasitic loss along the drivetrain. The opposite is true for a shorter piston. Because a shorter piston has significantly less weight, it's much easier for the crankshaft to spin these pistons up and down, and it reacts a lot better to changes in RPM. On the flip side of that, however, because you have more weight on the rotating assembly, it's actually harder to change the speed of these pistons. And in the case of a racing engine or an engine in a street car, the heavier mass might prove to be detrimental. But if you put the same pistons inside, say, a tow vehicle, the extra mass actually allows the engine to maintain its momentum. And that actually helps it take off from the stop easier with more weight. It actually provides smoother gear changes. And if tuned properly, these engines tend to run really smooth. Now that comparison only works because these two pistons are completely different. And although you might see differences in different engines running taller or shorter pistons, they're not directly comparable because there's no way you can put a piston of this size into an original bore of this size. So simply moving to the next oversize or two on a stock piston is not going to give you the benefits that you would see like you would by switching to a piston that's twice its weight. But if you take this concept and you apply it to OEM engines like the Cummins, the 7.3 Power Stroke, you're going to start to see trends where certain pistons will fall into economy cars or passenger cars or light duty trucks. And the bigger, beefier, taller pistons tend to go into engines designed more toward tow vehicles where super high RPM is not as essential as smooth running and consistent performance. Now, if you see a piston of this size and you see how beefy it is and you see how heavy it is, you're going to think that because it's heavier, because it's beefier, it tends to be a stronger piston. And that's going to be a huge misconception that has zero bearing on the physical size of these pistons. The size of the piston has no bearing on the strength of the piston. Case in point, this is a hyper eutectic piston and this is a die cast piston. So their properties are completely different. Their range of operation is completely different. And just because the ring lands are of different size does not give you a direct comparison of how much power this piston can hold versus this piston. In another video, we're gonna be talking about piston width and rotating assembly weight. So stay tuned for those. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, signing out.